I'm out here in my garage, aka my server room, to talk to you about my home storage network testing that I've been doing. Those of you that watch my videos for a while, you know I'm all about the home storage. I gotta admit, I've had a few secrets under wraps that I've been waiting to tell everybody about until now. If you've watched my Drobo review that I did with Brian back in the summer, I kinda teased that we'd be doing a Windows Home Server review. And I know a lot of you are like, what? Hold on a second, bear with me. If you haven't watched the Drobo review, you've gotta go watch that. Go over to youtube.com slash Broadcasting. Search for the Drobo review. It's actually, it's pretty interesting stuff. It's a Drobo with Drobo share. But at the end of that video, I teased that we'd be comparing it against the HP MediaSmart Windows Home Server product. Now, everybody knows that a good, cheap file server, that's Linux's territory. That's its domain. And FreeNAS, I also think it's FreeNAS's territory. So I said, let's do a battle royale. Let's compare them all against each other. So I've built a FreeNAS box. I've built a Dell here. It runs FreeNAS. A small hard drive runs FreeNAS. And then I've got uh, three SATA hard drives in there for storage. It's pretty cool. I've got doing Samba. I've got it doing uh, all kinds of network services. I like it a lot. But my question has been, how does it stack up against the commercial products? The ones you'll spend five, six, seven hundred dollars on. That's what I'm going to find out. So I'm going to compare FreeNAS against that HP MediaSmart. This is this guy over here if you're watching the video. How does that, the Windows Home Server from Microsoft with the HP that's built, the HP's built the uh, MediaSmart hardware just to run Windows Home Server. How does it work? It's got four drive bays in it, right? It's, it's nice and it's pretty and it's currently crashing. How does it stack up against FreeNAS? Well, what about the Drobo with the Drobo share here? I've got a Drobo right here with, with uh, a ton of storage in it. It's got a 1.5 terabyte drive, it's got a one terabyte, another terabyte, and another terabyte drive. How does that stack up to FreeNAS? But wait, there's more. I'm also gonna see how it stacks up to the Apple Time Capsule. The wife has a Macintosh upstairs and she runs Time Machine. And uh, it also has some basic network services that it can do. It can act as a network storage server. So this mission that I'm on is going to be a two-part video series. The first part of an in-depth look is FreeNAS versus the HP MediaSmart running Windows Home Server. Second episode coming out later will be FreeNAS versus Drobo and the Apple Time Capsule. So let's get on to the Battle Royale in this episode of an in-depth look. Probably the first area to start with this comparison is the fact to realize that FreeNAS is free. You have to load it on hardware that you own, but you don't have to pay for the operating system. And if you already have a spare machine like probably a lot of us do, even an older machine by quite a bit, it's free. You just have to have the disk. Windows Home Server is also purchasable as a standalone product that you can load on your own hardware, but that key word there was purchasable. It is not free. Then there's manufacturers, and HP is one of them that sell hardware specifically designed to run the Windows Home Server operating system. Okay, so why would we do this? Why would you want Windows Home Server over FreeNAS? Well, for some of you, you wouldn't, but there are some advantages. So let's see if, they, if we stack them up, which one wins? Well, in this comparison, we're looking at from a hardware standpoint of the Media Smart hardware. So let's talk a little bit about the Media Smart hardware, which... I'm going to look into, by the way, to see if I can load FreeNAS onto. One, it's it's small. It's got a nice footprint. It uh, It's headless. It has lights along the front that tell you if a drive has failed. So you get a, a, a light that lights up right there that says, hey, this drive is bad. You need to replace this particular drive. That's nice. Keeps things easy. Now, because of the technology in Windows Home Server, they don't extend that to the ability to remove that drive on the fly. You can't slide that drive right out, swap in a new drive, and have it rebuild. In fact, you actually have to go into the Windows Home Server console, and in that console you have to remove the drive. Then it's quite a lengthy process while it moves data from that drive to another drive. And that's assuming the drive is actually still even available to do that. If it's a complete disk failure, if you don't have something like their duplication technology turned on, you're totally screwed. The, du the duplication technology is literally a single, it's not like RAID where there's parity information, it's actually they physically copy each file to another drive. So no one drive has all the files. You can turn that on and off, but essentially what that means is if you put up a, um, a 1.2 gigabyte DVD file and then it has to duplicate that to all the other drives, well the Windows Home Server hardware to keep the cost down is not super fast. So that kind of 
bottlenecks the entire machine while it's sitting there trying to duplicate files from one drive to the next so you have a back above it. So it's not actually a practical solution like they say it is. I was disappointed with the file duplication technology and I would have preferred if it supported some sort of actual rate like FreeNAS does. But Windows Home Server specifically states it does not work with actual conventional rate, whereas FreeNAS has that ability built right into it. So that's definitely a win for FreeNAS. From the hardware standpoint, the MediaSmart server is a great design. It's low power, it uses the AMD Live chip, it, uh, it's kind of loud, but it's not too bad, and the size is great. If there was a way I could load FreeNAS onto that hardware, that would be fantastic. But from my initial research, it looks like the networking card, the gigabit card in the HP MediaSmart server does not have a compatible Linux or a free uh, BSD driver, so it's probably not just a straightforward install. And also, since it doesn't have a VGA port or uh, anything like that, it also makes it kind of hard, but not impossible. All right, so let's look at some of the more advanced functionality. If you are a Windows shop, if you're a small business, or you have pr primarily Windows at home, I'd say the Windows Home Server is a slam dunk for you. The reason for that is it has some really actually, and this is, I'm going to give credit where credit is due, it has some really good backup technology built in. It can back up the PCs on your network using an imaging-based system. So that means the first initial backup is quite large. It's an image of your entire system. But then each sequential, sequential backup after that is just a differential image image. So it gets just the change and it compiles one whole image. That means if your hard drive dies you, or you want to replace the drive with a larger drive, you can take your machine, pull out the drive, put in the new drive, have a completely blank drive, boot off a CD, it will connect over the network to the Windows Home Server and re-image your machine. And it has technology to resize the partition if you want to just move to a larger drive. That's actually really slick. Now there's nothing built directly into FreeNAS to do that, but there's technologies that you could leverage that could work in conjunction with FreeNAS like over the network shares and things like that. There's some free like Clonezilla and things like that that could image over the network. Now it's not exactly in it, uh, what uh, the Windows Home Server software is doing and it's probably not as elegant but it's free. So if, if, you're, if, you have, if you have some time you can spend on setting that up that's something you might want to look into. The other area that's uh, kind of a dead simple area that if you, uh, if you stream a lot of media around your house to an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation 3 things like that other uh, DLNA compatible devices like the Popcorn Hour then one particular option that the Windows Home Server has is really dead simple uh, streaming. They they use the Windows Media Player Link technology, which a lot of these other devices use. It's a deal. It's a standard DNLA using universal plug and play to discover each other, and it can send music and videos and pictures to these devices. It's just a checkbox in the Windows Home Server software to get that going. It's a couple of extra configuration steps and you have to generate a database on FreeNAS, but it's also doable on FreeNAS. So that's not a complete win for Windows Home Server. It's just it's just kind of a semi win. But again, if you have a little bit extra time, you can get that in FreeNAS and and it's doesn't cost you anything other than your time. One one area that I think FreeNAS really trumps uh, Windows Home Server is in the wide range of expandability and uh, flexibility. For example, uh, FreeNAS can be loaded, can be ran from a CD, can be ran from a compact flash, things like that that help you get around the potential failure of your primary system drive, which can crash your entire server. Windows Home Server requires a complete drive. It is actually Windows 2003 small business server, which they have hacked to disable you to do some of the more advanced things like turn on Active Directory. So you can get in there through a remote desktop and you can actually get to the Server 2003 console, though they don't recommend you do anything outside the Windows Home Server console because you could break some of the scripting and hacking that they've done to make uh, Windows Home Server really easy. So you're constantly battling this line. If you're an expert and you want to push things just a little bit further, you pretty quickly run into a wall with Windows Home Server. Whereas with FreeNAS, it's literally like you're just getting started. They've given you the base and you can go from there. You can load up ports and you can install bind if you want DNS. And I mean, you can really go to town on FreeNAS. Uh, whereas with Windows Home Server, you pretty quickly hit a wall. Though that said, Windows Home Server has a large community of add-ins that are being developed free and commercial that really do some pretty interesting stuff. Um, if you use Windows Media Center, which I know some of you out there do, they have a, 
add-in that can automatically grab the recordings off of your Windows Media Center and store them on the Windows Home server to make them available to all the computers on your network. That's kind of slick. Another thing they have is power management utilities where you can remotely reboot, sleep, and uh, wake up the computers on your home network. Now, there's technology out there for free now, but it doesn't have a slick GUI like they have in this console for the Windows Home server. So that's kind of a give and take there. Uh, the other thing the Windows Home server can do is it can monitor the antivirus status on all of your Windows machines. But they don't have a lot of support for anything under Linux other than just accessing the file server as a Samba file server. Whereas FreeNAS offers uh, AFP, which is the Apple file imprint. FreeNAS also offers NFS, and it of course offers Samba. So it offers a lot wider range of different operating system supports and can work in a more flexible environment. So that's definitely something to consider is that FreeNAS is ready to kind of fill any particular need you need, whereas Windows Home Server is a lot more focused on a Windows only shop with the with the ability to serve files to Mac and Linux, but that is not its primary focus. So that's definitely something to consider there. Though for some people that won't be an issue, but for others it's definitely going to be something to consider. So those of you that have been paying attention now, I've been running the Windows Home Server for a long time. I teased it in the Drobo video that I already did, and that was back in midsummer. So that's how long I've been this is what now January. And uh, that's how long I've been running the Windows Home Server. I ran it for a really long time because I really was trying to have to have an objective opinion about it. Because honestly, I've had nothing but troubles. I've had significant troubles, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't my. Uh, I I was I felt I was likely to condemn the Windows Home Server before I gave it a fair shot. So I held off on my review as long as possible, so that way I felt like I was giving it a full chance. And in that time, since summertime. I have had a Windows Home Server nightmare, I guess I would say. I'm, I'm trying to be as nice as possible, but the truth of the matter is, it's been nothing but a problem. File duplication was a disaster, as I hinted at earlier. Um, the drive pooling technology it does. So the way Windows Home Server works is each share lives on a main system drive. And then some, almost like through a symbolic link, it links to a, a bunch of different drives in the pool. So you write data up to your system drive. So you can only write as much data ever as big as your main system drive. So my main system drive in my Windows Home Server was 500 gigabytes. So I could never write up more than 500 gigabytes at a time, even if I have 4 terabytes in additional drives. Not a big deal, but that seems like a funky limitation. Why spend all that money on buying 4 terabytes to only build a copy 500 gigs at a time? So anyways, you copy the data up there, and then the Windows Home Server uses a drive pool manager to move that data to individual drives in the storage pool. What this does is it kills the performance of the Windows Home Server. It runs horribly during this time. You can't really use it for much more. I had times where I would start initially copying, and the speeds would be fantastic. I have a gigabit network in my house, and I would see, <coughs> excuse me, I would see copy speeds around 50 megabits, 45 megabits, and then after a couple of minutes of copying a single large file, that would quickly drop to 20, and then 10, and then while it was really chugging to move files, I would even have around 3 megabits. What the heck? I mean, that's just not even acceptable. That is ridiculous. So that was my initial issue, is that was a problem. I kind of then learned to only feed it a little bit of files at a time, and I worked around that. Then I ended up having issues with stability. Um... Initially, there I got when I got Windows Home Server, they hadn't released their first power pack yet, which is basically their service pack. So I hung on for that. The power pack installation went a little rough. After the first installation, it rebooted, and none of my shares were available. I could see them, but I couldn't access any of them. I didn't change any passwords or anything like that, but I couldn't get into any of the shares. I couldn't get to my data, basically. So the advice I read online was reboot the server a couple of times. So I did that. After a couple of reboots, I was able to get into the shares. But that is kind of scary. It seems, I don't know, it seems like I'm playing with fire with my data and I didn't like that. But after that, things ran good for a while. Then, with the recent windstorms, we had a power outage. And the server was plugged into a UPS battery, but the battery eventually died. Ever since then, which has been about two weeks ago, the Windows Home Server will not boot. It'll boot but it won't boot the operating system. I can't get to my data. I can't see it on the network. And since it doesn't have a VGA port, I can't exactly plug into it and see what it's doing. Now, HP ships it with a recovery CD that can connect it over the network in a 
like a firmware level recovery mode. You, there's a little pin you can push in and it boots into recovery mode and it's like a low level deal. You connect it over the network and you can actually reload the Windows Home Server OS and supposedly that doesn't wipe out your data, it just reloads the OS and gets it back online. Obviously they thought this needed to be done because it was going to be a problem. So the fact they've even built this in is kind of a bad indicator in my opinion. But here's the catch. I've lost that CD. I moved and in the process of moving, I misplaced the CD. So now I'm stuck with a server I can't boot, and because the hardware is designed specifically for Windows Home Server, I can't leverage it for anything else. I've looked into installing Linux, and I've looked into installing FreeNAS, but there's network card drivers, there's other issues on there, so I'm kind of stuck now with a piece of hardware that I can't use for anything else. So I'm hoping that essentially a, a network card driver will come along that will work with that machine so I can reload it with a different operating system. So I would definitely not recommend the Windows Home Server operating system. I don't know if this has been hardware-specific issues. I don't believe it has been. They all appear to have been software-caused issues. The hardware, as far as I can tell, is good. I think it's decent hardware. I really do. I think it's the operating system. I think they had to make enough significant changes to Windows 2003 Small Business Edition to make it home-friendly that they lost some of the stability. Not that Windows 2003 Server is some champion of stability, but it's not this unreliable. I work with it enough to know that it's not this bad. So I think it's got to have been the hacks that they did to get it working. In the end, I have to give the nod to FreeNAS. While I haven't had enough, I haven't had the same amount of usage time with FreeNAS, I know from the history of FreeBSD that it is a rock solid operating system and that it's going to run even after a nuclear bomb goes off. FreeNAS is still going to boot and let me get to my data. So I'm giving the win in, in this battle between the HP MediaSmart and FreeNAS, the win is going to FreeNAS, for sure, in my opinion. So I definitely think if you're looking to build a home network and you want storage and you're comparing these two products, you've got to go with FreeNAS. Build your own cheap box. You know you can do it and go with FreeNAS. Now, in next episode, how does FreeNAS stack up against the Drobo? Now, that could be a completely different category, right? Because the Drobo is much more of a hardware-based solution, and I tend to like those. So so uh, I think in a couple of days I'll release that episode after I get some of the final things in the review done and I record it. Uh, that'll be an interesting one, at least in my opinion. I think that's going to be more interesting. I want to remind everybody that uh, we have a sponsorship through GoDaddy.com. And if you use the code Linux when you check out, you can save 20% off any order. And it keeps these shows coming to you because GoDaddy pays our bills. And we really appreciate it when people use the, the code Linux when they check out at GoDaddy.com. If you've got any questions for me, if uh, you wanted to uh, give me any hints with FreeNAS or had any questions regarding Windows Home Server, hit me up on Twitter, twitter.com slash chrislas, or you can email me, chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And please, go to youtube.com slash jupiterbroadcasting and subscribe to our channel so you can get these episodes when they come out in video high-definition form. Um, something like that. Uh, but anyways, I, I appreciate when people subscribe and write to our videos. Uh, it... It keeps these coming, you know, in a timely fashion, and I know that people out there have an interest, and it, it's it's a lot of fun for me to get that. That is essentially the best kind of feedback I can get from the community. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoy this this battle royale. Uh, please stay tuned for the next episode coming out soon, and keep it geeky. This episode of an in-depth look was sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Starting at just $3.99 per month, Linux shared hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24 by 7 support, and free access to GoDaddy Hosting Connection, the place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. Plus, as a viewer of an in-depth look, enter the code Linux, that's L-I-N-U-X, when you check out and save an additional 10% on any order. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at godaddy.com I just wanted to really quickly say thank you to everybody that responded to my video about uh, which microphone I should use the, I mean the feedback was a resounding big microphone the PR the PR 40 from Heil that was the resounding feedback I mean huge so I'm going to keep this but what I'm going to do is I'm going to order a different um, you know pop shield so that way it uh, doesn't take up as much room you don't have this big this big black pop shield here. So I'll get, I'm going to get a different one. And uh, it's just like the one Leo uses if you've seen Twit Live. And then also, um, I'm going to get a light up here. I'm ordering a big fancy studio light to kind of give better color because I kind of have like different different tints on my face right now from my computer monitor, whatever I'm doing on the computer. It kind of shows up as like a blue sometimes or green or, or orange. Um, so I'm going to get a light installed up there. So that's coming. It's a new pop shield, new light. Going to keep the big mic when I'm using this camera shot so we get the nice audio. And uh, I really want to say thank you for your feedback. You guys are all awesome. It was really cool.